Body Senex. Body Senex. So if you have been following our channel for quite some time now, you will have noticed our previous tutorial regarding the three most important exercises in calisthenics. Hence why today's tutorial is aimed towards helping you cut short of this process of trial and error. In this tutorial, we're gonna provide you a detailed insight of five important wisdom nuggets in calisthenics which you can immediately begin applying into your calisthenics training regime. We at Bodysthenics, with our combined 10 years of experience in calisthenics, have come to believe that it's not enough to just know what your goal is and to just train randomly, hoping that one day you will achieve it. The five key aspects which we're gonna to touch on in this video are not only going to outline various corrective training methods, but will also offer you some insight in terms of how to structure your goals, how to tally your own progress, and what training styles to avoid. So without further ado, let's get into another epic body sthenics tutorial. The first category are the locked out arms. Full range of motion is extremely important in order to avoid the creation of imbalances in your body. If you are always performing limited range of motion, this will result in a lack of corrective function in movements. So in order for your calisthenics journey to not be a rehab journey, you need to begin performing full range of motion. We experience every day athletes come to us with specific goals. However, they are unable to progress due to simple lack of functions in their elbows, shoulders, and overall general mobility. And the causes of all these imbalances are not only the incorrect workout styles, but it can also be caused due to hard labor in your day-to-day -day life. A simple and common imbalance we notice in a lot of athletes is on the dip bar. We have come across many athletes who are unable to lock their elbows out straight in dip support position. This will not only make it more difficult to progress into more advanced exercises such as the planche and the handstand, but even basic exercises such as dips will become extremely difficult to perform properly. When you lock your elbow out at the top of the dip, you're essentially entering the resting phase of the movement. So if your elbow is not locking out, you will fatigue much faster and not be able to perform optimally or gain any type of functional strength while performing on the parallel bars. A quick fix for this is to perform arm twists, where you begin in a dip support position with a depressed scapula, and while maintaining a solid scapula position, you perform elbow twists. This exercise is extremely effective in increasing range of motion in your elbow joints, strengthening your tendons and ligaments, hence improving function and overall elbow health. Begin with the inner elbow facing inwards, then twist through your forearms and bring your inner elbow to face forward. And repeat this for reps until you feel a burning sensation in your arms. And the same exact exercise can be applied to the support in push-up position. When applying these exercises over time, you will notice that your full range of motion will be achieved in both dips and push-ups. For a more in-depth analysis on straight arm training, be sure to check out our previous tutorial on how to build straight arm strength. Also, be sure to comment down below if you would like to see a detailed tutorial regarding incorrect calisthenics. The second category is goal setting. We often see calisthenics athletes set unrealistic goals for themselves. An example of this is a complete beginner wanting to do a planche or a front lever. This is like someone wanting to join a football team with no prior experience in football and having the expectation of being in the starting lineup. You must first begin with the basics in order to build some fundamental strength, not only to condition your body, but also to familiarize yourself with the sport and to discover what your body is naturally good at doing and what you personally enjoy the most. Also, do not set too many goals at once. As a beginner, it's really important to set the right goals for yourself right from the beginning. So we at Bodysthenics, based upon our 10 years combined experience in the sport, advise all athletes to begin setting goals around the three most important exercises in calisthenics. Once you become really good at these three exercises, you are only then ready to begin setting more challenging goals for yourself. For example, if you are already able to hold a solid handstand for over 30 seconds, this means you are ready to begin learning the handstand push-up. If you are already able to perform six to eight solid muscle-ups, then you are ready to begin training for the front lever. And if you are able to perform over five dragonflies, 
your body is conditioned optimally, your body is ready to withstand the tension that more advanced exercises will produce, such as the human flag, the back lever, the one arm pull up, the dragon flag, or even the impossible dip. But for the purposes of goal setting and assuming that you are already great at the three most important exercises which we have just mentioned, once you set a more advanced goal, you should then adjust your training around that goal, but continue training the top three exercises, however in more difficult variations. So the handstand hold with time should become the handstand push-up. Then the handstand push-up with time should become a deep handstand push-up. And after multiple reps of deep handstand push-ups, you are then ready to take your inverted strength towards 90 degree handstand push-ups. Extreme strength later on can also lead you towards performing deficit handstand push-ups and even deficit 90 degree handstand push-ups. So if you want to see a more detailed tutorial on how to set achievable calisthenics goals for yourself, comment down below. The third category is the importance of the hollow body. A lot of athletes confuse the hollow body with the hollow back. The hollow back exercise, also known as the Superman, teaches the entire posterior chain of the body to be in hollow. However, this is not as important as what the hollow body is, which trains your anterior chain. And the reason is that the hollow back is not really applicable to many calisthenic skills and elements. Everyone is looking for that perfect form. Essentially, perfect form really translates to a perfect hollow body. The hollow body is important in order to train the neuromuscular system, your entire body, to perform as one compact unit. The fourth category is statics at the start. There are a multitude of reasons why it's more beneficial for athletes to perform static elements and skills, or any skill-related goals at the beginning of training and not at the end. When training for skills and elements, in order to see real progress, it's more optimal for your body to be rested, fresh and ready to go. Training skills requires prolonged holds and muscle contractions for time under tension, intense focus, concentration and a reactive nervous system. When your body is fatigued, it's unable to perform optimally in all these areas which we just mentioned. For example, let's say the front lever is your goal. Train the static portion of the movement in the beginning of your training. Then once you can no longer hold, then move on to your strengthening exercises such as the front lever raises and negatives. And once you're also tired from those, you can then move on to more conditioning exercises such as the Australian rows. The final category today is the strength pyramid. The strength pyramid is a method of tallying and measuring your strength to endurance ratio. This pyramid consists of two measurements, the horizontal and the vertical. The horizontal measuring being your endurance and the vertical measurement being your strength. In order to increase your strength, you must firstly focus on increasing your endurance. Let's take the push-up as an example. For someone who cannot perform a full body push-up yet, would modify the exercises and perform knee push-ups in order to increase their endurance and rep range. By modifying the exercise, this will allow the athlete to perform a higher amount of reps, hence over time increasing their strength. So for someone who can do 6 to 8 modified push-ups, this could potentially mean, based upon the numbers, that they can perform 1 to 2 full body push-ups. In saying all this, regressing the difficulty or modifying the exercise have tremendous long-term benefits to your endurance and strength overall. Body Senex. If you guys found value, then be sure to subscribe and also hit that bell icon for notifications. We upload a new tutorial every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. European Easter Summer Time. Before clicking out of this video, be sure to get your own wrist straps at bodysthenics.com. And to join our global family of athletes who are improving on a daily basis, send a direct message to management on Instagram today to join the first ever online calisthenics training portal. Senex. You can do this through Body Senex.